Hello and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Tuesday the 28th of May 2019 and the time has just gone 11.35 British summer time. Um, it's been a bit of a negative start to the to the European session. Uh, probably the most uh, important financial markets news has been that there's a possibility of a new row escalating between Brussels and the Italian government. Uh, essentially, um, the EU have, have criticised the Italian government for letting their debt situation to get out of hand, and and they're threatening discipline, and that could lead to the, the Italian government uh, being hit with a fine of up to four billion euros. Uh, on the on the other side of the coin, uh, the uh, the Italian the Joint Deputy Prime Minister Matteo Salvini. Um, has a uh, sit back of this, and he'll, he'll uh, use all of his energy um, to kind of fight back against the kind of outdated fiscal rules of the European Union. So, with, with that political tension on the horizon, uh, we have seen an increase in Italian government bond deals. That in turn has has, uh, has put pressure on the Italian banking system, which of course has enormous exposure to the Italian government bond market. And there is just the old um, Italian debt fears resurfacing. And obviously, the eurozone is quite interlinked. So if it, it, it the concerns over Italian banks, that spreads out across the region wide. And Italy has always been at the back of traders' minds. Uh, Italy is sitting on a mountain of debt. Uh, it's running a budget deficit. Um, um, it has, uh, and on top of that, we've just re- the Italian economy has just recently come out of recession. So the last thing uh, the administration in Rome wants to do is rein in public spending with the risk of sending the economy back into recession. And Italy, keep in mind, you know, is one of the largest economies in the eurozone. So um, if there are, is, to, is to be a kind of a full-on uh, financial crisis or banking crisis like we saw in other countries, um, such as you know Portugal or Greece or, or Cyprus, whatever it may be, Italy is a different story. It's, it's the third largest economy in, in the eurozone. And should that really flare up and erupt, uh, it could have a major negative impact on, Euro- on the EU as a whole. Um, speaking of the EU, we have the European Union elections uh, over the weekend. Um, the kind of takeaway points have been the kind of traditional, um, bit well-established parties in all the various different countries did not do well. And there was a kind of a move towards, on one side of the divide, uh, the more Eurosceptic parties, uh, and also the Lashi and, and in other countries, there's more there's a move more towards the Green Party. Uh, so looking at the UK, the Brexit Party topped the polls in, in the UK. Um, the the National Rally, formerly known as the National Front in France, uh, they're they're um, they're tipped. Well, when the count is completed, it's looking highly likely that they have have, 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 have won the uh, won the won, won in France. Uh, and all, and as I mentioned, um, the the largest the largest party in Italy, the Liga party, the party of Matteo Salvini, um, there are they also um, look to look look appear to be the the, uh, the biggest winner uh, from the EU elections. So, uh, in a number of large EU countries, uh, I know the UK is leaving the European Union, but a number of large EU countries, uh, anti uh, EU anti anti EU rhetoric is on the rise. So we could wind up in a scenario when we when you know when we have the first sitting of the new Brussels Parliament. Uh, the new EU Parliament, we could have a scenario whereby a sizable chunk of the uh, politicians are actually opposed to the European project. And that could lead to kind of longer term structural issues because if there are many, if there are a sizable um, proportion of policymakers who are against uh, continued integration and various different policies of the European Union, it might, it might make uh, decision making uh, in the European Union quite difficult. Uh, but also, it's been kind of a shot across the bows. To the, um, to the kind of you know usually the kind of slightly left left, left of center or slightly right of center well established parties in all in all uh, across Europe uh, they need to really kind of pull their socks up as it were because they lost out uh, some of them lost out to Greens uh, and some of them lost out to uh, more right of center further right further right of right of center um, anti uh, euro skeptic parties so we have seen a bit of a sell off uh, in eurozone equities um, the Italian market uh, no surprise there it's probably the the biggest decliner. Uh, the U.S.-China trade situation continues to rumble on. Uh, you know, in the last 12, 48 hours, we heard from President Trump, who stated that um, the U.S. isn't ready to make a deal with China yet. He was talking about how China should have taken the deal that that was on the table, you know, a few weeks ago before they tried to renegotiate. That situation is uh, is kind of is, is bubbling away. 
President Trump is over in Japan at the moment. Uh, he's, he's looking to readdress the balance, uh, the trading imbalance in uh, between the United States and Japan. But that appears to be a bit more, um, a bit more friendly. Um, uh, but keep in mind, the uh, the China story has been hanging over the markets for the last few weeks. And to be fair, on and off has been hanging over for, for seven months now. So it still isn't out of the woods yet. So. Given that we, we've seen a bit of pressure on equity markets in, in, in recent weeks, it's likely we could see further pressure in the near term. So I'll start off by looking at, um, at the FTSE 100 and see how things are playing out. So the, the wider upward trend is still very much intact. We can see a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. And this has been a pretty much common theme, you know, rally between late December and, uh, and April or maybe early May in some cases has been a common theme uh, across uh, European and US equity markets and Asian equity markets um, basically throughout 2019. But if you take a look at the FTSE 100 here, we can see that the market uh, has unfortunately is, has held, even though we, even though we had um, the, the, the sell-off in, um, in, in mid um, in mid May managed to kind of take out the lows of, uh, of late March, we have managed to recoup some of that ground and Ultimately, kind of while we hold above this red line here, the 20 moving average, which comes into play at 71, 73, if we can hold above that, it's likely we could see further ground be made. And should you press on higher from here, the first area to keep an eye out for will be this blue line here, which is the 50 moving average, and that comes into play at 73.41. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the kind of psychology important 7,400. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the, uh, the April highs. If you do have a size of break to the downside below the 30 moving average, and we take out this, this yellow line here, the 100 day moving average, which comes into play uh, in around the kind of 71, 80 mark, we could be looking heading back down toward this area here in around the, 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 um, the late February lows of in around 70, 40. Take a look now what's going on over in Germany. It's a similar situation whereby the German market rally between late December and, uh, and early May. So we had a multi-month high here in May. And since then, we've come to come off the boil a bit for, like, as, as I said, uh, the Chinese, U.S.-China trade situation. Now we're looking at we could be in for another kind of, you know, Eurozone debt, debt, debt scare in relation to Italy. But the markets are holding, the DAX is holding up okay. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we have, we have seen, you know, the lower low, or could be, you know, the lower high, and could be potentially looking for another move to the downside. But... While we hold above this this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 11,976, while we hold above that, it's likely we could see the wider upward trend continue. And should we press around higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the kind of 12,400, 12,460 region up around here, which would be in around the um, the early May high. If you do have a size of break below the 50 moving average, keep an eye on this area here uh, in around 11,823. We can see it actually have resistance in in in, in um in, in mid March and also act as area act as support on a couple of occasions in in April and also in in uh, in mid May. So keep an eye for 11,823. And if you have a size of break below that, we could be looking heading back down towards the 11,600 mark. Take a look at what's going on over in the US, starting off with the S&P 500. So the S&P 500, keep in mind, hit an all-time high uh, here in late late April, early March. So the market, you know, the wider upper trend is still very strong. But, you know, as I said, we, we have seen global equities move to the downside. So the market pushed, pushed lower here, bounced off of, 7, of 2,800, pushed higher here. So we have the lower low lower high here and we look to be a bit indecisive you know this could be the point where we look to retest uh 2800 and should we have a size of break below that that will then um be significant because the lows then we would take we would then be taking off the most recent lows and we'd have a lower low a lower high and a lower low so uh keep an eye out for 2800 uh, um, if you do break below that and if you do have a break below that support might be found from this red line here which is the 50 day moving average, sorry, the 200 day moving average. The red line is the 200 day moving average, and that comes to play in at 2,774. Also, keep in mind this trend line, which has been in place for quite some time, uh, is, is still, is still worth keep an eye on, keeping an eye on. If you draw a low from the lows of February 16 to the lows of November 16, you get this trend line along here. 
on a few occasions the back end of last year it acted as support it acted as both support and resistance uh in, in you know in um in 2019 and we could look at heading back down towards that area it's not it's, it essentially coincides with the 200 moving average which, which which to my mind makes it even more uh make, makes it even more significant because if, if a couple of metri- if, if a couple of metrics which have been important in the past overlap it makes it more likely we could see that area being being a, an area of importance so we could look at uh heading back down towards that area around the 2774 region um but if the market manages to kind of hold above the kind of 2000 in the market manage to press on higher from here we could be looking at retesting uh, the mid May high of in around 2,892, and if we go beyond that, uh, we could be looking at heading up towards the uh, back up towards 2,920, and then beyond that, look at retesting the all-time highs. I'll take a look at what's going on on the Dow Jones now. It's a similar situation um, on the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones didn't hit an all-time high uh, a few months ago, but did manage to hit. Um, that it managed to hit um, quite quite significant levels uh, back in May, but sorry, back in back in April rather. And the market, if you can see here, a similar situation or by the trend line from the lows of February February 2018 to the lows of March and April 2018, create this trend line along here. Similar situation with with the S&P 500, whereby the market did manage to act as reasonably good, okay, uh, support and resistance level in 2019. And the market effectively traded a bit below, but um, um, effectively closed um, either at or above it in mid-March, but in mid-May, rather. Nonetheless, while we hold above that line, it's likely we could see uh, further gains on the Dow Jones. But if the, uh, if the if the overall trend does turn negative, support could come into play in around that area, which would be in around which also coincides with dirty moving average in around 25,435, 25,400. Um, keep an eye for that area. If you do see a significant break below that, uh, keep an eye for the the, um, the lows of early, of early of mid-March, which come, keep so in around the kind of 25,225. If you would break below that, we could point to further losses. Um, the, you know, the, 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 upper, the trend for the last few months, the upper trend is, is, still, is still in place. Uh, but if, if you, do, you you know you need to be more in order to be more confident that the wider trend is going to continue, we would need to kind of take out this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 26,060, and then move beyond that. Could take us back up towards 26,400, and then we could be looking at head up towards the 26,700 region. Take a look now at what's going on over in gold. So gold, um, since February, has been a nice example of a, uh, a downward trend, a nice series of lower lows and lower highs. And essentially, while gold remains below um, this area here in around 1300, 1304, uh, the kind of mid-May high, while it remains below that, it's likely we could see further pressure on the commodity. And if you do manage to push on lower from here, we could be looking at targeting 1266. And then if you go keep pressing lower from here, we could be looking at targeting this region here in around the 1250. We can see that acted as a, um, uh, a resistance on a few occasions at the back end of last year. So it's possible it might act as support in the near term. Uh, if gold does manage to press on higher from here and take out the kind of uh, 1303, 1304 metric mark here, uh, we could then be looking at targeting 1310, which would be the mid-April high, and then beyond that up towards 1324, the uh, the late March high. Take a look now at what's going on on the oil market, starting off with um, Brent crude. The oil contracts have had similar similarish moves in the last few months. Like with equities, um, oil has had a big rebound between December and April and May. But since then, we have had a, a bit of a, a bit of a shakeup. Our concerns over uh, the future demand prospects because of the U.S.-China trade situation has kind of dampened, um, has encouraged um, some traders to sell oil. But we have seen uh, the oil market manage to recoup some of its losses in the recent session. So. Um, we, what's, 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 what bodes well for oil, or for Brent crude at least, is it's back above this red line here, which is a uh, 200 moving average, and that comes into play just above $69 a barrel. So if you can hold above the 200 moving average, it's likely we could see 
um, the wider upper trend continue and should you press on higher from here we could be looking at it towards the 72 mark and then if you go beyond that they get at the mid the uh, the mid march high of in around 73 spot 60 and then if you go beyond that we could be looking at retesting the uh, the april highs if you do manage to have a size of break back below the 200 moving average then keep an eye out for this this yellow line here the 100 moving average in which comes into play at 67 spot 35 we can see here, um, back in the, in the start of the year, the, the metric did manage to act as support on us on a few occasions. And if the metric acted as a support on a few occasions in the past, it makes it more likely it will do so in the future. Uh, now turning our attention to WTI. It's a reasonably similar situation on WTI, whereby we've seen a fairly decent move higher from late December up until April, May. But of course, it got caught up with the, um, the, the, con the concerns about future demand because of the US-China trade spat. What's, what's, um, what marks out WTI um, as the weaker of the two oil contracts versus Brent crude is that WTI is still firmly below this red line here. It's 200 moving average, which, co which comes into play just above $60 a barrel. So we're currently on around 59 spot 07. So we're, we're still a good bit below the 200 moving average. And while we, we remain below that metric, uh, it's likely we could see further losses. But notice how on the 100 day moving average which previously acted as support uh in february march of this year it's holding it's just about it's, it's traded below that on a few occasions but it's managed to hold above it so it seems to me that that, 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 that the market is in a, in a, bit of a bit of a limbo position whereby it's below the trading moving average so the, it's a bit of a negative outlook but if you can hold above the 100 it still has a chance of getting back above the trading moving average and pressing on higher so the wider trend of the last few months has been to the upside Brent is above its 30 moving average, so that, that, that's positive for the overall oil market. If, if WTI can retake um, its 30 moving average in around in, in about $60 a barrel, we could be looking at retesting the, the, um, this region here in around 63, 63.75, um, and the kind of the mid the kind of mid May highs. Um, if you do manage to kind of have a size of break below this this area here, take out the most recent lows. Uh, just north of kind of in around the in around the um, in around the 57 20 mark, mark if you do have a decent break below that we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 55 spot 45 it acts as both resistance and also a support um, not too long ago so it makes it more likely it will do so in the future take a look now at the euro versus the US dollar so euro dollar has been in a nice downward trend the last few months nice series of lower lows and lower highs yes i can clearly see the highs of march managed to take out the sorry the highs of uh the highs of march managed to take out the highs of february but you know it's still a classic example of you know, still it's almost a perfect example of a, of a downward trend but we can see here straight off the bat that this blue line here the 50 moving average which comes into play in around 112 spot 27 we can see uh that that's been acting as resistant after, on a few occasions in the last few months. So while we while we hold below that metric, it's likely we could see further losses uh, potentially down or down heading back down towards the recent lows of one spot uh, eleven ten. And should we, should we move below that, uh, the psychologically important one spot ten could then come into play. If you can manage to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here, the uh, the mid the mid April highs of in at one spot thirteen twenty two. And if you go beyond that, we can look at it towards the kind of 114 mark and then the kind of in around that 1 spot 1445, 1 spot 1448 in, uh, from mid March. And lastly, taking a look at the pound versus the US dollar. So, we quite a, since early March, we've had a fairly aggressive negative move on, on the pound versus the US dollar. We have a massive series of uh, daily losses along here. There's a lot of pressure on Theresa May to announce a re resignation. At the back in the last week, we finally got that. So we've seen a bit of a relief rally, but the pressure is still very much to the downside uh, on, the, on the British pound, especially in the wake of the success of the Brexit party in the EU elections, um, because there might be some of them the Tory party. You might suggest that given how, popular, how well the Brexit party did, in the EU elections, and their policy is for a no is for a no deal Brexit. We might see some individuals um, look to contest the Tory leadership on the on a ticket of a no deal Brexit. And should the markets uh, a no deal a no deal Brexit is something that the financial markets would, would, would fear the most essentially. 
if the Brexit is as kind of soft as possible, it's likely we could see a benefit to the pound. But if, if it looks like the UK, is, if, if it looks like the next leader of the Tory party is going to be very much in favour of Brexit, possibly even in favour of a no-deal Brexit, we could see further pressure on the British pound. So the trend has been to the downside for the last few months. If you look and t- take off the most recent lows, I mean, if you look at, if you look at, if you continue to press on lower from here, and we look at and start taking off the one spot 26 mark, it could take us back us down to this area here in, in a one spot 24.76. Uh, any moves to the upside in the pound versus US dollar could run into resistance in around the kind of one spot 28 region, and then a move beyond that could bring the 200 moving average into play in around the kind of one spot 29.55 area. Um, just want to show I've got a quick run through of the week ahead. If you go to our website cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, you will find the week ahead section. Um, it lists off all the major uh, macroeconomic and corporate stories of the week. So uh, Wednesday tomorrow we have the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. Uh, on Wednesday we have first quarter numbers from Abercrombie and Fitch over in the US. Also we have Dick Sporting Good Q1 figures. Um, on Thursday, we have U.S. GDP first quarter. Uh, on Thursday, we have full, full, year, full year numbers from the British company Penon Group. Uh, we also have um, we have first half figures from D- the Daily Mail and General T- General Trust company here in the UK. Uh, Thursday, we have uh, first quarter figures from Dell Technologies, and we also have first quarter results from the Math and Gap. And on Friday, we have Chinese manufacturing and Chinese non-manufacturing. Uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.